I would like to ask you the most important question that you could ever be asked. Do you know for sure that you're saved? Are you 100% sure that your sins are forgiven, that you have an eternal home in heaven? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? The good news is you can know for sure. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 1, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He said, I know. He said, he is able. You see, salvation is about what the Lord has accomplished for us. Religion is man trying to earn his way to God by his own works, and that's impossible. Salvation is God coming to man and accomplishing salvation as a free gift. I'm not talking about religion. In the religious world, they'll say, well, nobody can know for sure. They don't have any peace. They don't have any assurance because they're trusting in themselves. But when you trust in the Lord, you can have peace with God and much assurance of your salvation. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 1, he said that our gospel came unto you not in word only, but in power and the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. He said, therefore, in Romans 5, 1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul had that peace and he had that assurance in 2 Timothy, the last letter he wrote by inspiration before he was executed as a martyr. They cut his head off. He knew that was about to happen. You know what he said in 2 Timothy 4? I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He knew it. He knew for sure that he was saved, and he was going to be with the Lord. You see, death is not ceasing to exist. It's not annihilation. It's a departure. It's a separation. Now, you can know for sure that you're saved. And that's the most important thing to know. The Bible says that if you're lost, you're dead already in trespasses and sins. You see, there's different kinds of death. Uh, there, death is a separation, and so uh, you have the issue of being dead in trespasses and sins, meaning that you are separated from the life of God. You are separated from eternal life in the Lord. You are separated from the Spirit of God. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You see, that's the problem. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Now, there's nothing you can do to fix it. A dead man can't save himself. We are dead in trespasses and sins as lost sinners. Now... You have a physical body, and so the wages of sin is death, and that's when your soul and spirit depart from your body and is separated from your body. And if you die physically in the lost condition of being dead in your sins, there is also the second death spoken of in Revelation 20, which is eternity in the lake of fire. That's what we deserve for our sin. That's the wages of sin. And you can't fix it. And you can't uh, do anything to save yourself. The good news is, Paul said in 1 Timothy 1, Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners. He is the Savior. And He accomplished our salvation. And so how did He do it? He went to the cross and bled and died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and on the third day He was raised from the dead for our justification. Romans 4 said he was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. We can be made righteous in him through what he accomplished in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's what it means to be justified. It means righteous, declared righteous. How can God look at sinners and declare them righteous? It's on the basis of what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished. Through his death, burial, and resurrection. You see, the gospel of our salvation is plainly stated in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. Paul said, it's how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. His death, burial, and resurrection. He accomplished it all. We're sinners. 
We, des we deserve death and hell for our sins. But the Lord Jesus Christ left heaven's glory, came into this world, took on flesh, born of a virgin. He had to be born of a virgin to take on flesh and yet still be God. He was man, yet he was God in the flesh. Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's who he is. He came into the world. And the reason why he had to be born of a virgin is because, as it says in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore is by one man, Adam, sin entered in the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. He's not the seed of Adam. He wasn't born of the flesh in terms of the seed of man. The Holy Ghost placed the seed in Mary's womb so that she gave birth to the Son of God. So that he could take on a body and yet still be God, the sinless Son of God. And he took that sinless body to the cross and laid it down willingly, willingly as a sacrifice to bleed and die for our sins. I deserve death for my sin. But the Lord Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, he was made sin on the cross to die for our sin. And his sacrifice was so great. When he shed his blood and died, the Father, God the Father, counted it as payment for the sin of the whole world. He accepted that payment, and the proof is on the third day, he was raised from the dead. He is the living Savior. He is the only Savior. I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I'm not asking you to trust in a church or, or a man or a religion or anything. I'm asking you to believe God. There's nothing more reasonable than to believe God. God cannot lie. You see, you can know for sure that you're saved because God cannot lie. And God cannot fail. And faith is taking God at His word. This is God's promise. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. He cannot lie and He cannot fail. And so put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible proves itself to be the Word of God. I mean a thousand years before Jesus was even born, King David in Psalm 22 described the crucifixion of Christ. You talk about detailed prophecy proving the Bible to be the Word of God. It says, they pierce my hands and my feet. And it even says what, he, what Christ said on the cross in Psalm 22, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why did he say that? Paul explains in 2 Corinthians 5, For he hath made him to be sin for us. The Father made the Son to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He became our sin on the cross. He shed His blood and died and paid for our sin in full. He rose from the dead. Now when you trust in Him, He not only takes away your sin, He gives you His righteousness. That's how you're justified, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. What are you trusting in? If you're trusting in any works that you can do, you're not trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's already done. Religion is about man trying to do works to please God, but the Bible says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. In Romans 8 it says that. All our righteousness is as filthy rags, Isaiah says. Uh, we cannot please God in our flesh. Christ pleased God through His sacrifice. He accomplished our salvation. It's the perfect, complete, finished work. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and you can know it. Ephesians 1.13, Paul said, In whom you also trusted, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Faith is believing what God said. When you believe the gospel of Christ, that He died for your sins, was buried and rose again, and you put your trust, not just the mental assent that, uh, of the historical fact that Jesus died on the cross, but when you believe in your heart that He died for your sins, and you trust and depend on His work of salvation, when you trust in Him, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are saved, and you can know it, and you are eternally secure in Christ. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? You can do it today. 
The jailer in Acts 16 asked the Apostle Paul, What must I do to be saved? Here's the plain, simple, clear answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's between you and God. If you know you're a lost sinner and you deserve death and hell for your sins and there's nothing you can do to fix it, put all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross and rose from the dead. Trust in Him and you'll be saved and know it.